Hi, welcome to the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. I'm John Molesky, host of Dialogue. We're on the set of Dialogue. Just concluded a discussion based around what uh, Steve Lagerfeld, the editor of the Wilson Quarterly, calls the cluster. And this becomes, it's a segment where you pick a couple of authors to write around one big idea. That's right. Yeah, often from, you know, different perspectives, uh, in this case, on four different subjects. For and, big and, questions, as we call And them. two of the authors with us, Peter Cookson and Tom Tock, and we've been talking about education uh, and about education reform and all various transmutations. And I wanted to ask you, gentlemen, uh, something that we started to talk about off the air, uh, and we'll share it with our YouTube audience, is this notion of uh, teaching becoming more respected professionally, professionalizing the whole uh, industry or the whole profession. And we had referenced in other countries and uh, teachers have a much higher social standing than they do here. Maybe let's begin with a little bit of why. Why is that? Why do we treat teachers as lesser uh, professionals than we do accountants or doctors or lawyers or others? Well, some countries, uh, Finland would be a great example, uh, have made it a national priority to ensure that the best and the brightest uh, coming into colleges uh, focus on, on teaching as, a, uh, as an opportunity, uh, ensure that they are paid well when they get out, uh, and uh, give them lots of professional support uh, that includes sort of uh, or, or results in status uh, that is often lacking in this country, but we're moving in the right direction. I mean, we've done a lot of things in the last decade uh, to uh, raise the profile of teachers, uh, pay them better, uh, give them more rewards and, and recognition for uh, doing a good job in the classroom and supporting their work in the classroom. That pay them better part, is it, is it, do we just make too much about how much a person earns when we're assigning status? Is that why teachers are not? That's not why they respected? leave generally in the beginning of their career. You know, but is uh, it, I'm talking about how people view them. Oh, I, probably. I was going to just uh, put a footnote to what Tom said um, in a couple ways. One is is that when you think about the expansion westward and about what American life was up until you know I don't know after World War II, it was kind of a pioneering culture. So the idea of spending a lot of time in school and all that. You know, you look at the Huck Finns and the whole tradition, sort of anti-intellectual. Don't spend too much time in your, in school. I think that's a one strain that made teachers maybe not have the status that they would have other places. But I think Tom's right. I think that's changed in the last ten years. But you know, I've been working with teachers really all my professional career, uh, tra you know, preparing them and uh, evaluating situations. And I'll tell you the thing that they really gets under their skin is a lack of respect. They they really do. Yeah, they, they, it they, comes up all, time and time you know, again. It's not so much the working conditions, although that sometimes will drive teachers out of the work. It's the pay. They know what the pay is going in. And, you know, a lot of teachers are pretty thick-skinned. This sort of you have to be respected and be treated as a doctor. You know, a lot of them kind of take that with a grain of salt. But what really matters to them is, is that people ignore them, including their principal quite often, and that they don't feel that they get the respect that they really ought to have. And I think that... Uh, but you talk about Tom their principal said. doing it. it, it the principal is a key it's, person. It starts it's within a key person. school. If the principal, again, going back to the local experience of being a teacher, if the principal of that school is animated about his or her teachers, if they care about his or her teachers, if they've got some intellectual ideas. You know, I once said to a principal, you know, I'd love to see the day when the principal walks down the hall with a book instead of a clipboard, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. and really carries that idea with him or her. Uh, teachers respond enormously because morale is huge when you're teaching. I mean, how you feel about what you're doing. I'll give you an, go ahead. I'm, I'm I would say one one uh, sort of missing ingredient to to our uh, efforts to to raise the status of teaching is that we really haven't uh, made performance a high priority. We have evaluation systems that are really nothing more than drive-bys, where a principal mm -hmm. with a clipboard comes in for 30 minutes. That sends uh, and with right. uh, you know with a, a checklist uh, of of behavior behaviors like is the blackboard clean or whiteboard clean, uh, et cetera. Um, that sends a subtle but important signal to teachers about the status of their profession. Uh -huh. So some people today are, are critical of the new teacher evaluation systems that are coming into place in part because they focus on student test scores. But but most of these systems are much more sophisticated than that. They, they have uh, uh, valuable sort of models for uh, evaluating classroom instruction. Well, it, when you when you bring these these models into the classroom, start 
uh, looking at teaching as a serious occupation where you expect much from the teachers, then they start to feel better about their work and people around uh, them uh, inside schools and out uh, begin to see it as a, a valued profession too. I wonder how much of this is self-created though because uh, my anecdotal experience, my wife a teacher, a story she told me recently, uh, after a night where I worked late and we have, Steve and I have little cards here that can get us into this building 24-7 if we are so inclined. Not paid to be in here yeah. but they can get <laughs> us in here. Right. My wife uh, consequently every summer when school is out they have to turn their badges in. They have right. no access right. to the building and their access to the building ends at 6.30 in the evening so they can't work late even if they want to well you know this is interesting because it is a public <clears throat> institution and they are civil servants and that I think is one of the great rubbing points here and one of the reasons why teaching is in this flux on the one hand there should be professional and creative and all things that, that Tom talked about on the other hand is the reality of their life is that it is these public institutions that are run by school boards who make rules and pretty much yeah. as a teacher you can't step outside of that and that's that's a real contradiction to being a full professional you wouldn't want a doctor to be say sorry you can't get into the Locked hospital out of your office you right. know but it wasn't too long ago when teachers were punching time clocks yeah. mm. um, and, and and we ha I think we have to acknowledge that the that the introduction of collective bargaining the sort of traditional mm -hmm. industrial style unionism uh, into teaching you know 40 50 years ago uh, has contributed in some ways uh, to the sort of bureaucratic ness of the job and there is a tremendous tension today between that um, sort of culture and the, the desire on the part of many to professionalize uh, teaching, yeah. to give teachers more recognition, make it a, a performance-based occupation. Yeah. Steve, uh, what, what haven't we talked about that the issue also covers in the realm of education? Well, we have uh, uh, pieces on uh, college for all. We did questions. College for all. Uh, and also teach to the test question. The college for all, is that a question of whether that's a good idea or not? That's right. Uh, it is a big debate, I think, that's going on now. It's a constant debate. But, uh, you know, whether our secondary schools in, in particular should be geared toward getting more and more people into uh, uh, college, uh, or whether we should try to increase the number of people who go to college but work harder at uh, creating other pathways, as uh, one famous report on the subject uh, put it, uh, for kids who are not going to go to college. Uh, and I include, you know, a uh, community college, that's considered college. But uh, so developing, paying more attention to those kids who, you know, under the best of circumstances are going to be about 40, 50 percent of, uh, of uh, a graduating class. And uh, uh, so the discussion is about creating other kinds of institutions, other kinds of pathways. Uh, without compromising uh, the sort of academic component of their education to prepare them for, for their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'd like to hear more about our guests' thoughts on education, uh, have we got a deal for you? Two ways to do it. You can go to our website, wilsoncenter.org, and click on the TV and radio tab and watch an entire 30-minute discussion with our, our panel uh, via dialogue. You can do that for free, or you could subscribe to Wilson Quarterly or both, and you can read about it. Uh, reading is still a good way to learn things. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, John.